Howdy folks, Tetsu here, down in the lower tiers, where the power is low, but the battles are fierce. And today, we're moving on to match nine. Uh... <laughs> uh right off the bat, I ended up losing my train of thought. Wonderful. Alright, so yes, we're moving on to match nine, and it's going to be Pineco, I sh... I shot? Honestly, the first time I read this, like, on the, uh, smoggin, on the smoggin thing, I, I thought it said Pineco is hot, but apparently this is Pineco I shot. Okay, fair enough. Uh, versus Eve, and that was a bit of a weird tangent. Anyway, so, um, yeah, this is match nine, still in round one, uh, after all. I don't know either of the players, have literally no idea what's about to happen, but we're going to be starting with my favorite part of the analysis, which is kind of hilarious, I suppose. At the very beginning, the lead metagame. Let us continue. Play. All right, first up, we have a Voltorb lead. Double Voltorb lead. Okay. This is, this is a first, actually. Hmm, alright. So what, what do we got here? Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind is double T-Wave, uh, <laughs> battle. Or possibly a switch with another, uh, using a T-Wave. I guess it would kind of depend. In this case, the first thing that comes to mind would be whoever has a Rhyhorn is probably going to want to switch that in to tank a T-Wave or a Thunder or a Thunderbolt. I'm not really thinking that we're going to see... Sorry. <laughs> Kick my desk. Uh, good thing I'm wearing still toes. Anyway, I, I don't really see a water type being switched in, so a Tentacool or a Goldeen, which we actually haven't seen one of those. A Shelter, definitely not. Too... I mean, you're talking about slow, like, snail space at that point. Uh, but enough speculation. Either an attack, switch, a T-Wave switch, or double T-Wave. Let's see. One Thunder Wave going off, and double. Okay, both Voltorbs are now paralyzed. In comes a Rhyhorn. Another Thunder Wave. All right. And then Golbat. Okay, this is this is good. Now it depends on what Eve does next. Now it's always tempting to go Earthquake, and I understand why it's a Voltorb. But at the end of the day, there are about well, technically, I think I believe there's like four, no, five, five, definitely five, maybe. Five different uh, ground immunities within the tier, that being Golbat, Pidgeotto, Pidgey, Doduo, and Spiro. Which, out of those, two of them are very, 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 very unlikely. And the other one's, like, incredibly niche. And, well, okay, technically Pidgeotto is also pretty niche as a lead, and it's not incredibly good, but it is faster than Tentacle, so it does have its niche there. Uh, mirror move shenanigans. Anyway, uh, the other thing is Rock Slide. If Eve decided to go with Rock Slide, I, slide, slide, I will be very, very happy because, I don't know, j just the thought of making that prediction. To be fair, it's also a very neutral move. Um, all things considered. So, let us continue. Substitute on the switch. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Here comes a rock slide now. Yes. Okay, no crit. So, switch. Okay, switch to Charmeleon. And, okay, double edge. That, okay. That's a, that's a pretty decent prediction. Okay. So... Yeah, because Mega, Mega Dream was completely pointless, would have been completely pointless there. So, I will commend Pineco for that prediction. That, that was actually very good. That was actually a very good choice. Alright. 
But so far, good play by both players. And a switch to Tentacle. Fire Blast? Okay, nice prediction right there. And then... Slash would not KO from there. It, it would not. Hmm. Okay. Bl Blizzard. Well, in Gen 1, Fire actually doesn't resist Ice, so that would be neutral. But why not H-Pump? What were they predicting? Ivysaur? I mean, I suppose there's a small possibility that they don't have Hydro Pump on their moveset. And they just went with the strongest move they had, which was Blizzard. That, that, that is interesting, actually. So, what are we going to glean from here? Well, my net, my thought process would have to be that we're going to see a wrap battle. Whether that revolves into a switch, or just whittling down the other tentacles' health. Uh, which so far it seems to be the latter of those two. The question is, if one... Oh, okay. Pinecoat winds up going to switch as well. The interesting bit is... As far as Charmeleon and Golbat go, both are faster than Tentacle. And Clefairy comes out. And it is wrapped. Alright. So that wasn't a wrap... Wait... Okay, so attack continues. Move to 12, Clefairy comes out. Okay, so it was not a trap switch. Okay, so this is a fresh wrapping turn, which is interesting. So Clefairy is, at this point in the rankings, pretty high, actually. Um, which, for good reason, it's a normal type in Gen 1 for... Okay, Thunder Wave block. I love the I love the move actually. Um, okay, Clefairy is Thunder Wave. That's actually not too bad, all things considered. Um, it does it does have a chance to affect counter if Clefairy happens to have it on its move set. And Clefairy is already quite slow. So, being Thunder Waved is actually not that big a deal to it. At least as far as my opinion goes. I might actually have to ask around for that one. Let me know down in the comments. But, it, it's, a, it's an interesting quandary. Clefairy, like I was saying, is actually ranked pretty highly now in the, met, in the uh, tier. Simply because it's a very good utility mod with some incredible coverage. Psychic, which hits three prime Pokemon in the tier, even though it's not doing very much damage, mind you, because Clefairy's stats are not all that great, but it also has Body Slam, which is incredibly spammable, which is, you know, a way to paralyze as well. T-Wave, as you saw, a very good use. Uh... Spreading paralysis is always handy. Uh, and I was talking about counter. Counter is very decent with facing Meowth. Clefairy takes a ton of damage from physical hits. And with counter, yeah, most of what you're countering is going to be knocked out, most likely. I suppose there are exceptions to that. but eh. Alright, so we're going to play... So, okay, Thunderbolt. And that doesn't do too much, but that Blizzard missed. So I'm assuming they're ju just going to battle it out at this point. But I wonder if anyone's going to switch. Voltor. Okay, explosion. <laughs> uh, Alright, fair enough, fair enough. And Meowth comes in. Double Meowth. Alright, so the Voltorb exploding there... I will commend it, because Voltorb was paralyzed. There's not really much at that point, especially how low health it was, that it was going to survive against to actually blow up, and there was never a guarantee that it would actually work. Even if you did. So, doing that on Clefairy is not a bad, is not a bad thing. Especially on uh, T-Wave support, 
I think is actually pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that play. Sure, it would have been nice to maybe get a whole bunch of damage on the opposing Meowth, but eh, I can't really, I can't really knock the decision. All right, Slash coming in, broke the speed tie, and both are down to below thirty-six percent. In comes Kabuto. All right, this is the first time we've seen Kabuto used, or Kabuto. From my understanding, uh, Clefairy and Kabuto are actually a pretty decent combination. Uh, I have never seen it, and I haven't seen it in action yet. Well, that's not entirely true. Uh, me and Beedrill Man, whenever we were playing, he was talking about it, and I think he used... I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he used that combination for one of his team makeups. Um, I can't really remember the battle that well, but then again, my memory sucks anyway, so that's not really surprising. But the fact of the ma the fact of the matter is though, Kabuto is a very interesting one. Now here's here's the thing though. It is very slow. Meowth here has Thunderbolt. I I'm going to I can only assume that Kabuto cannot be knocked out from this point, but for the sake of argument and, you know, for the fact that I want to make sure that everything is up to snuff, uh, Kabuto, and then we got Meowth. We're going to be at 35% for Meowth. We're going to have Slash for you. And we're going to have Thunderbolt for Meowth. Okay. So, at 78%... Oh! Oh! I I'll talk about that in a second. Let let me let me get back to Kabuto. Uh, mm, okay. So let me see here. Thunderbolt is a guaranteed two hit KO. Kabuto Slash is a guaranteed Oko. So Meowth did have to switch out there. So that's good. Okay. Let me check something. Before before I comment about what I'm looking at on the screen. Okay. Yes. I I, I kind I was kinda wondering below the the post on the forum that I got these uh, replays from, right below that is actually uh in a notice for those exact game for these for this exact game. Uh I wish I would have scrolled down and I could have explained that to begin with. But uh, Weeping Bell is actually not a part of the tier. This is Bellsprout's turf. Get out of here, Weeping Bell. <laughs> uh, actually, that makes me kind of wonder, like, how, like, what is Bellsprout able to do? Uh, sleep, it's got all the powders, it access to grass moves, uh, it's got wrap. Actually, how fast is it? I'm talking about something completely different at this point. Okay, so basically it's saying that Weeping Bell is not legal in the tier. But it also says that it didn't affect the match's outcome. So there's no redo. So apparently this Weeping... Even though Weeping Bell is in the game, uh, it apparently didn't do much. So... I mean that that's good. At the, at the very least, uh, they were able to keep their game. The games were able to count, if nothing else. Um, okay, so I'm gonna basically ignore Weeping Bell for right now, and just pretend it is not there with this goofy looking expression. All right. So okay, body slam, no paralysis, and Golbat comes in. 
gets hit with Stun Spore, and then goes for Wrap. Uh... I, I'm not really sure how to narrate this now because uh, hmm An another another non trap switch another non trap switch I am kind of really curious if this is intentional or not because I've I've actually seen this quite like I think four or five times so far maybe just three I'm probably exaggerating at this point but. It makes me kind of wonder, like, because I've done this before where I'm in the middle of a rap and then I don't realize that rap has stopped working because the way it works in Pokemon Showdown, I think I mentioned this before, but when, like, you're the only one who knows, like, if you in, in initiate a rap, all your moves are basically faded out except rap or bind or clamp or fire spin, you know. However, when it stops, and again, you're the only one who knows this, you're, the rest of the moves are clickable. What's funny is that if you're not paying attention, you can actually miss that, especially for me. And I've done it like a couple of times myself. So I don't see it as really anything unusual, all things considered. Um... It, it is just a bit funny. It, I, I don't know. It, usually you'd want to get in on a rap switch for safety. but eh. Anyway, uh, continuing on. Golbat goes down. And in comes Tentacle. Yeah. Alright. So switch to their own Tentacle. And it goes for a Blizzard Freeze. No. It's... <laughs> always going on. Alright, start of another rap battle. Are we going to see a switch? Uh, well, right now it's not really looking good for Pineco from what I'm seeing, and ends up losing the speed tie there. Now, I'm pretty sure Tentacool is actually down low enough for Meowth to take it out, if it so chose. But most likely, it's just going to switch. Uh, Eve is just going to switch into Rhyhorn. Okay, and that's actually very good. Rhyhorn comes in. Substitute coming down. Now, Earthquake is going to hurt quite a bit. Yeah, that, it's gone. <laughs> that was easy, easy, easy KO. And in comes Meowth. Bubble Beam. And Rhyhorn just gets immediately sacked. I mean, at the very least, I kind of figured that Weeping Bell would come in, but maybe they realize maybe they realize they're not supposed to use it. Huh. Uh. That's that's a weird amount of switches. Fire Blast. Do we get a Thunder Wave? We do. Thunder Wave has been hit. That means Tentacool will be able to come in. Oh, the explosion! Very good. Charmeleon is in trouble and it has been taken out. Okay. Weeping Bell does come down. And in comes Tentacool. What do we got? Razor Leaf? Uh, okay. This is, this is a bit interesting. I'm assuming that Pineco loses this. Yeah, okay. So, the first match does go to Eve, but we, we gotta remember that Weeping Bell is actually not a part of the tier, so I'm not 100% sh I'm really not 100% sure if I should even bother with this recording. Should I? Hmm... Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it in. But just for future reference, Weeping Bell is not in the tier. Okay? Okay. So let's move on to the next one. I've got everything set up. So the first game does not exist. It will 
be put into the archive because uh, I mean might as well but we're moving on to game two let's do this starting off my favorite part Tentacu and Voltorb okay okay so pros and cons in this case Voltorb holds Basically, a decent advantage against Tentacle. It threatens Thunder Wave, and if Tentacle gets Thunder Waved, it's in for a bad time because Rap more or less relies on speed. If Tentacle is, well, paralyzed, its speed is halved, and it's just it's just not going to be able to be an effective rapper at that point. So, I really can only see see Pineco from just switching because th I suppose there's something to be said they could just want to do pure damage to Voltorb and if they don't have a rock type well a, a ground type that is able to soak up the thunder wave I, I'm, I'm kind of debating this depends on it really depends on what Pokemon they have uh, I'm assuming Voltorb is going to stay in because I don't know if there is a Rhyhorn or a Cubone or whatever ground type is available to avoid a Thunder Wave or even a Clefairy or something that's already slow that's not going to be affected too much by Thunder Wave. Uh, I suppose there's a chance at doubling, but it, I mean, for a quick switch out, but, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to assume that Tentacle is going to switch here. Yep. Yeah. Quick switch to Rhyhorn, Thunder Wave, yep. Yeah. And there is the block. In comes Weeping Bell again. Um, well, it does get taken out. To about 50 health and a quick paralysis to Charmeleon. And Tentacle is coming out. Slash? Body Slam. Paralysis? No. That actually did quite a lot. Oh, that was a critical. No wonder. Alright, incoming wrap that does miss. Surf. Oh, what? Wait, 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 wait. Pause. Right, let me go back. Okay, 34%. Let me get the battle battle calculator. Uh, tentacle blank set. Tentacle blank set. And we're going to set you at 100. And we're going to set you at 34. I'm going to give you... Uh, surf and hydro pump. Okay, so okay, they're both guaranteed to hit KO. So I was kind of wondering if hydro pump would have possibly been able to take it out, but no, it both. While Hydro Pump obviously will do more damage, it's really not by a whole lot, if I want to be honest with you. Excuse me. Uh, okay, so lesson learned. Okay, and missing of the ramp, and yeah, there goes the Surf. So here's the... Okay, ends up going for another ramp. But are we going to see a switch? Or is Eve going to sacrifice their tentacle just try to get as much damage on Pinecos as much as possible? As much damage as possible. And at the point I'm looking at now, that seems to be the case. Hmm. How fast was Weeping Bell? 208. So yeah, tentacle is faster. It, I was kind of wondering if it was slightly faster. We could probably see a switch in. And let's see. Tentacle can't move. 
Okay, well, while this is going on, I'm going to... Okay, so we got Meowth coming in. There is a wrap. Uh, but what I want to do is I am actually curious. 68%. Let me... Okay. Because, I mean, ultimately I want to understand the damage ranges for, for most of this stuff, which is quite useful. Let's see... Okay. So... For the current... For tentacle right here for pine cones. there is a 10.3 percent chance of an oko from a meow which is very interesting and sorry about that all right so let's play and there is going to be that switch to meowth actually that's 63 how much is that Okay, that's a 59% chance to Oko, okay. so that's that's pr some pretty substantial damage. Hmm. I w I'm kind of curious of why, why they would allow it to stay in. I am curious about that. But Rhyhorn is coming in. And slash... This is... Um, okay, so earthquake is probably gonna occur. So don't I don't mean to get on a tangent right now, but I am gonna I'm gonna try to be quick about this. So one of the things that comes to mind uh, about this is for one, granted because the grass type is available, I'm kind of wondering if. Because I know some, like I know some people build teams around particular uh, themes, or like they have a certain game plan. So I'm kind of curious: would it be possible to look at the team, like depending on what it is? Uh, I know in a, like later generations, that's actually pretty easy. Where here, you you don't really see the team until they're shown. So that is a thing. Uh, What I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at is, can you relay prediction like in RBY through that? I suppose that's a possibility, and I don't know. At this point, I think I'm just way too tired. I probably should just stop rambling. All right. So, Rhyhorn does get hit by Bubble Bane, and this is gonna hurt. Yeah, Earthquake twenty percent. Then comes Voltor slash. Okay. No, Bubble Beam, it doesn't do too much. Uh Okay. That that was a really, really cool play. So Voltor got switched in. And Eve was like, you know what? This may have is probably not going to stay in, so I'm going to risk switching to Tentacle. And in comes Rhyhorn. That was gutsy. That was gutsy. I love that move. I really do. And Hitmonchan is coming in. It actually still outspeeds Tentacle. So the question is, who is going to switch in? Weeping Bell? Would be the first thing that comes to mind? Cut. Mm. Hmm. I'm not sure about Voltorb. I know Rhyhorn's not coming in. Oh, well, let's see, actually. Sir, okay, they're going to sacrifice Tentacle. In comes Body Slam. Which, understandable. Just in case they switch, you might be able to get something out of it. Hitmonchan is going to go down. Because it's just slower than Meow. Which is kind of sad because Hitmonchan is probably one of the more decent checks in the tier. Because it actually has a move that can one-hit Meowth. Like, no questions. 
uh, in submission. Granted, it's not a very accurate move or strong in most other circumstances, but hey, it, it is a it is a way to check now. Okay, in comes Rhyhorn. I I mean the only other the only other mon that could possibly outrun it is hurt currently. Now, Meowth isn't going to be it Meowth's going to be taking a ton of damage. Even if it bubble beams unless I, I'm not even sure if on a crit it might it might. On a crit it might take it out. But Rhinehorn is not gonna go down just on a basic bubble beam. So from here I'm assuming there's going to be a massive amount of damage. Okay, Earthquake. 33% is it going to be a sack? No. In comes Ivysaur. Now, Ivysaur is an interest is an interesting one. Because it's, at least from what I've seen and from what I've talked to a few other people, it seems to be a, an okay check to me off. It has enough bulk to where it can survive a couple of hits. And obviously it threatens sleep, which if Meowth winds up being put to sleep, not, not the best thing for your Meowth to be, you know, taking a cat nap. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's not a, it's not like really a perfect check, so to speak. But I do, I actually do like the play for the Rhyhorn. Now, whether or not it, it would be considered a long-term, a goal to a long-term uh, victory, I don't know. But in this case, I do like the play because Meowth is now very, very hurt. And even if it comes right down to a speed tie, now uh, Pineco's Meowth has a chance to one-hit KO uh, Eve's Meowth. So that was a, that was very well played. I'm not going to deny that. Okay, Charmeleon, we now have the full team roster for Eve. Charmeleon does come in. So the question is, are we going to see Charmeleon put to sleep? It's either that or Body Slam. Okay, here comes the Body Slam. Paralysis? No. Uh, Ivysaur is slowed. Now, Charmeleon can't Oko it. And... Counter? Yeah! Yeah! Flame... Fire Blast. I was about to say Flamethrower. Uh, in comes the Body Slam. That was beautiful. Beautiful counter. I love it. Mm. Double thumbs up, Pinko. Uh, you'll, you'll love to see it. Okay. So Charmeleon does come down. I'm assuming this is going to be a sack now. Because Charmeleon's not really going to be able to do anything. Yeah. Double Edge coming in from Weeping Bell. So, Ivysaur? No, Meowth. Will this be enough? 1%! Oh, gosh. Dang. <laughs> so close. Okay, Tentacle does come in, and Weeping Bill does get sacked. So, who's coming in? Meowth? No, Voltorb. Okay, makes sense. Uh, Screech? Uh, pause. What was it in? Was it interpreting? Like, were they predicting Rhyhorn switching in, or even Ivysaur? Sixty-three percent. Okay, sixty-three. I mean, that's a 59% chance to Oko. And we made that calculation earlier, so I have no no real idea why I started clicking things. Yes, so Meowth can, well, has a chance of taking it out. And it immediately gets switched to Rhyhorn. Slash comes in. Switch? Nope. Rhinehorn gets sacked. So is it Ivysaur that's now going to come in? 
Yeah, okay. And Ivysaur is relatively healthy. And Body Slam doesn't actually paralyze. And in comes Body Slam from Ivysaur. And this is game, folks. Game. Nice job, Pineco, in round two. Uh, round two. Game two. Gosh, dang it, I'm sleepy. <laughs> anyway. Um... We're going to do it. We're going to move on to game three. Let's do this, folks. All right. So in the first round, Voltorb versus Voltorb. Second round, Voltorb versus Tentacool. So let's see. Will we see Voltorb versus Voltorb or any Voltorb leads? Tentacool, Charmeleon, the classic, the classic team, or classic adversaries. All right, so strategies. Hydro Pump, one-hit KO Charmeleon. Possible Wrap, which is going to lead to Tentacle taking damage if Eve does not switch. Uh, another thing, um, switch uh, opportunities. It really kind of depends, honestly. You could go for a Rhyhorn switch if you want, if you think that you're going to wind up in that situation where... Charmeleon is going to attack. Switching in Charm... Uh, Charmeleon. Uh, well, you could technically switch another Charmeleon in, take a slash, and if you're lucky, you're able to get the counter off. That would be a, a strategy, too. Um, what about on Eve's end? Mm, well, first thing that comes up is Voltorb, because that seems to be a common thing for Eve so far, is Voltorb. Let's see. H-Pump. H-Pump! Come on! Yes! The H-Pump. Alright. So, wrap? Yeah. Okay. So, Eve has the wrap, and the question is, are we immediately going to see a switch, or are we just going to see the continual pummeling of another tentacle? Oh, we do get a switch from Pineco, and that is... Let's go... It's going to take some damage over the course of a couple turns. Not much, but Eve might want to... Yeah, Rhyhorn. Why? Why Rhyhorn? Oh, well, that's why. <laughs> it wasn't a trap switch. Okay, and Shelter comes in and takes that relatively well. Go boom? No, it's going to clamp. Okay, well, it's not going to do too much. But that, that, that is a switch. That is a switching opportunity. Uh, Weeping Bell once again. <laughs> oh, boy. So Charmeleon does outspeed Weeping Bell. That, that is a thing. Voltorb coming in. The... I, I, I'm gonna... I'm gonna be honest. I'm assuming T-Wave is the reason for this switch in. I can, I can only assume that is the, the entire reason for it. To T-Wave the Charmeleon. Now, granted, I was going to say, why not the Rhyhorn? There are some, there are some faults with using Rhyhorn as a Charmeleon switch-in. For one, while Fire Spin doesn't do too much, I mean, it, it's just really easy... It's very easy to exploit it, uh, that particular uh, uh, particular matchup. Fi Fire Blast is another issue, ultimately, and I think that falls more on the on the fact that if Rhyhorn gets burned, it's it's severely crippled in a lot of ways, and uh, I don't know. Fire Spin, though, does come out, and we do see Pineco's Rhyhorn coming in. Thunder Wave. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, Weeping Bell comes out. Earthquake dealing up to uh, over half damage, actually. Charmeleon comes in. Stun Spore. Very good. Very good. Rap coming in. And Rap and Paralysis. That... <laughs> Uh, I mean, if Vic, if Weeping Bell wasn't in this tier, I would say that it's quite overpowered. 
because it actually has some very good tools to actually to be useful in the tier. It's ac it's actually kind of mind boggling. No wonder it's in six U. <laughs> but Charmeleon is getting pretty beat up, but Eve decides to actually go for Tentacle. Here's the cool part. Wait, wait, wait. Another... Okay. At this point, I'm actually wondering if... These two... I, I'm not 100% if I remember Pike and Co. doing a non-rap switch. I'm kind of curious if these people aren't 100% sure... What if rap switching is a thing? I would not be surprised because they're the mechanic is a bit weird. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but it is you know basic RBY. It is just something they do in competitive. So I don't know, but at this point it kind of seems that way. It really does. Uh, but Tentacle does come in, and Charmeleon tanks a Blizzard, which again it does not resist. Because fire in this generation does not resist ice. It's the reason Charizard is... Well, okay, there's a lot of reasons Charizard is not in a higher tier, but that doesn't exactly help. And I say that because I've been seeing like a lot of Charizards in OU recently. It's, it's freaking hilarious. Anyway, a Charmeleon gets switched out to Tentacle. Uh, and Surf misses. <laughs> what in... 256 glitch. Uh, okay, wrap coming out. So we're going to see a switch. We do see a switch, but from Eve. Voltorb, because it's faster, it now threatens Tentacle. Uh, okay. Switch. I'm guessing they're trying to bait out a miss. Would be... My thought process but yeah because voltorb is faster <laughs> and every time i say that he winds up switching voltorb any mon that's faster than tentacle just has a far greater time uh and that was a good prediction by pika explosion on rhyhorn okay Turn 29, they both switched. Turn 30, explosion. I can only assume that Eve, that Eve was under the impression that Pineco would switch. Because, and, and even then, I, I kind of have to question the decision here for that particular for that particular uh, move choice because there's no real reason for Rhyhorn to switch honestly it would be far better for it to get a substitute up because if you know it's gonna switch if you know it's gonna switch then you might as well put the sub up and go for the damage next turn now, I suppose there's an argument to be made that maybe that's not tr fully optimal, but to me, that seems like the, mo like the best idea. So, the first fall goes to Eve, and it's a self-sacrificial one. Uh, doing a little bit of damage, 18%. Uh, in comes Eve's Tentacool, and Pineco answering with their own. Rap Battle, Surf tanking it like a boss. Yep, there we go. Wrap. So are we going to see Charmeleon come in? Because th at this point, Tentacle should be... Well, here comes Meow. Uh, I'll continue. Wrap. I was actually kind of wondering, though, because Charmeleon will be able to outspeed Tentacle. If it comes out, uh, you could slash. Now, Rhyhorn would probably come in just so Tentacle could hopefully stay around for the late game. So, I suppose you could make the case of whether or not you could fire, you could risk a fire blast. I suppose there is that form, that, uh, that merit, merit to that argument. Yes, there we go. This is the risk of wrapping something that's quicker than you. Because Meowth is clearly just going to outpace it, but 
Tentacle is getting a decent number of damage. And in comes the Ivysaur. Once again, we're seeing Ivysaur being used as a pseudo Meowth check. It tanked a uh, Slash, and it winds up getting a sleep on the Charmeleon. And in comes Rhyhorn. Oh, we're going to see the Substitute! Substitute, Substitute, Earthquake! Can it beat the Speed Tie? Uh, okay, never mind. Actually, one f <laughs> Shelter is actually faster than uh, Rhyhorn. That that was dubious. That was very dubious. Okay, Th there 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 goes the slash. Brings it down to four percent now. Okay, so. <laughs> Why, why switch to Tentacle? Okay. Let, let, let's look at the teams. Let's look at the teams so far. So, up until then, uh, this mouth was actually far healthier. Weeping Bell. Uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to ignore the fact that it, it's not actually supposed to be in this fight. But, uh... I'm just thinking of it as a gloom with rap at, the, at this point. Uh, I'm trying to think, like, what could... What could uh, Eve have done differently in this case? Because Tentacle was a very valuable component. And Rhyhorn, at this point, really wasn't going to do anything. It, it's a 28% health. Is that enough to make a substitute on a switch? I mean, even if it was, it's actually outsped by a majority of Pine. Actually, all of Pine Coast T T T team actually outrun it. Shelter outran the dang thing. The only thing that doesn't outrun it technically is Pine Coast Rhyhorn. So. That makes me wonder, really. That does make me wonder. Hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how I feel about that. I think Rhyhorn should have been the one that was sacked, and Tentacle being left in, if for no other reason the fact that it can actually Blizzard down Ivysaur. Actually, uh, let me bring up because again, I need to understand this stuff later on. What is that ivy source sitting at? 57%. We're gonna go for blizzard? I'm pretty sure that this just okos. Yeah, it's a guaranteed oko. So, I really think that Rhyhorn really is just the better sack there. That is, that is totally my opinion. And, I mean, I might be wrong, but, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it, that that shelter should have blown up on that Rhyhorn. Actually, how much... And, yes, I, I realize I'm going, like, really, really over... over my usual time. But, I mean, I, I kind of accepted that when I decided to do all three battles in the same video. Um, this is at 28%. That's 29%. 28 is what I need. Uh, let's go with Explosion. It's not a guarantee KO. It's 69.2%, which is pretty high, but that's still a chance for Rhyhorn to actually survive. And if it does, you can use it as a sack later. But even then, you're not really losing too much, again, in my opinion, because out of the lot, Rhyhorn just seems the less valuable out of all of them, because it's completely outsped except by the other Rhyhorn. But, again, that, that, that is just my opinion. Alright, play. 
Alright, Slash coming down. Eaves me out. Oh, uh, what? Okay. So Tentacle comes out. It gets blown up. Both Meows come out. Four percent. Okay, so my no, my brain decided to uh, mess me with me right there. I was thinking for a second. I, I guess that Meowth had taken the other Meowth down on the switch in, but no. Uh, this is a very good play. They're wanting uh, Pinecos wanting to preserve their Meowth, which is very good. Sacking the Charmeleon. And I'm assuming going to go for the Ivysaur. Yeah, there we go. Weeping Bell coming in. Body Slam? Yes! 1% and no paralysis. But Ivysaur is faster. 218, 208, yeah. And now Charmeleon's coming in. It's asleep. Body Slam's not going to do too much. And I'm kind of wondering if this is going to wake up. But Pineco sends in the Rhyhorn. Whatever comes in is going... He's gonna... He's gonna sack the Charmeleon. And it's substituted! Oh, dear. Eve is in for a world of hurt. A world of hurt. <laughs> well, at, le at least the substitute is down. But yeah, Eve Eve has been backed into a corner and is about to yeah, that's uh that's painful. Alright. Ivysaur comes in. There yeah, there's not really anything they can do. Oh, but the paralysis Oh, but never mind. Oh that would have been that would have been so freaking hilarious if that had occurred, because from there it would have just taken a speed tie. To win. Because then Tentacle would have just been at the mercy. Good try for both players. I, I am happy that they allowed the matches to go. Because, yeah, we Weeping Bell is not a part of the tier. Um, that is interesting. But, uh, actually, if I remember correctly, like, in one of the earlier posts, they were actually talking about how Farfetch'd was a part of the tier, but it wasn't in the listing, which... I suppose maybe there was something like that, maybe, but I don't know. I didn't see, like, a notice for that specifically. But, at any rate, um, congratulations, Pineco, for uh, making it further into the winner's bracket. Eve will see you down in the loser's bracket uh, by round one of the LB. Um, uh, any closing thoughts at this point? The the Rhyhorns the Rhyhorn switching into the tentacle to be sacked into Shelter is, is still something that kind of bugs me. I'm not gonna lie. Now it might ne not necessarily have won him the match, but I, I I can see Eve doing a lot more with Tentacle than with Rhyhorn. It's just it's just my opinion, admittedly. At any rate, outside of that, both players played very well, and I honestly hope to see more from them. Now, any closing thoughts? Mm, no. Uh, at this point, like I said, they played well. I hope to see more. And I hope you guys are excited for more when we come back to match 10 of round one. Still got a, quite a few games to get before the first round is over, and I hope you will all stay tuned for them. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Tetsu, and if you want to join the shenanigans, if you want to battle in 7U, if you want to do the crazy plays, with Shelter and Kabuto's and Rap. Ah, I don't know. I was going for a big lead up and I, I just fell short. Anyway, 
if you if you want to join in on the fun, come to the RB Wide Smog and Discord and down to the Seven U uh, chat room and look for a battle, chat with everybody, uh, learn learn the tier. With enough people, we can make this go to the moon. And I have no idea where I said that. I really need to get some sleep. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this. I will see y'all later. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.